Hey everyone, I'm Steve from GamersNexus.net and I'm joined by Mike Gaglione and we're talking about some system building tips today. So tips and tricks as you're building computers, whether you're intermediate or a newer builder, this should hopefully help out with some of the frequently asked questions. Mike, what is the, the most recent case you were working on? Uh, most recently, we built the uh, Rosewell B2 Spirit. Um, I love working on those big cases. They're they're just so much easier to get in and out of. Um, however, sometimes you can run into difficulty with cable length, especially for the P CPU power. Right. Normally, you'd want to run it from uh, around the back of the motherboard tray yeah. and uh, then down and over. Um, but sometimes, if the cable's not long enough, you can run it up underneath uh, the graphics card and then directly into the yeah, CPU rather power than port. over everything else. Yeah, exactly. And that, that, that cuts down on the profile of the cables and stuff, and that's... Right. And cable management, it is, it is mostly an aesthetic thing. But on the functional side, there's not really that big of an impact for cooling. If you're to move the CPU cable one place or the other, it's not going to change that much standalone. But it will change dust accumulation and stuff like that. Yeah. Because as you have more cables, it'll catch the dust. Most of the time, I like to go, when I'm looking for a case, I like to look at all the pictures and see what kind of cabling they have built in. Because right. a lot of times, they'll have some really neat um, you know, channels or ducts or, or clips already right. built into the case that make ca like cable management a ton easier. <laughs> and they'll pre-route a lot of the cables yes, too. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, and on the dust side as well, the orientation of your case fans will impact how much dust gets into the case. So if you are normally, one would hope that if the system is left in its stock configuration, the fans should be about as good as they can be. But if you're buying new fans, you kind of want to make sure you're aiming it the right direction. Yeah. There's, there's a few ways to tell which way the fan's pointing to. Like if, you, if you're not sure which way the intake is going. There's the markings on the side of the fan. Right. And then there's the, the brand sticker, yeah. which is normally on the receiving end. So right. whatever side the sticker's on, that's the direction that the air is going to be traveling. Yeah, and it's got the little, like you said, the little arrows on it too. Yeah. Most people overlook. So make sure you install those pointing the correct direction. And on that front, I guess in, in our thermal test, we've learned things like positioning the fans in the top of the case, for instance. You normally have two slots in the top. Right. And in some of my observational tests, at least with the NZXT cases, if you route the, or if you put the fan in the top back, it can sometimes steal air in a way that's undesirable from an air cooler on the CPU. So you'll just have to try that with your different CPU coolers and see what works best. Uh, that would probably be my main piece of advice is try it in the top back, try it in the top front, and see with ADA64 or some other software what performs best, and then just change it, because that will benefit you in the long run for sure. Other things we've talked about for building, what about things that are commonly overlooked? Um, a lot of people don't think about the front panel connectors, <laughs> um, or at least have questions of whether of how to orient them. Um, right. Another thing, when you're looking at your case for the cable management stuff, a lot of cases will have um, the front panel connectors routed in really conveniently, and they'll be coming out of the bottom right where they get plugged into the motherboard. Um, I really like that. I also like labeling. Um, I like to have the, the label of the cable facing out when I right. do the front panel connectors. Um, yeah, that helps with making sure most, a lot of the cables, it doesn't matter how, how, which one goes in which pin. We're talking about the FPC, the front panel controller FPC. And so that's your power LEDs, your power button, power switch, right. reset switch. And for the most part, it doesn't matter. But some of the cables, especially the ones that you'll see with two different colored wires, are actually positive and negative, or ground and a positive, or something like that. And those do matter. They're normally marked on the board. Negative will often correlate with the black wire. And if you want to make it even easier, just like you're saying, just point the text outward right. so that you can read it. And that means that it is installed in the correct orientation. Right. But of course, before you'll be doing any of that, you should be putting your standoffs right. yeah. into, your, right. into your case to make sure you're not short in anything. Yeah. Yeah, that's overlooked a lot, I think. The, so a lot of modern cases now will pre-install those, right. which is amazing. But uh, but we both know we get some <laughs> cases and they're not always installed. Yeah. And if you don't know what they are, it, you're looking at these brass screws and you don't know where they go. They go. Right. And so you just directly screw in your motherboard and you fry it. 
Yeah, yeah. If you screw the motherboard in straight to the case, you're going to be in the most common scenario creating a direct short because the case is often made out of steel. Even if it's painted, it will still create a direct short. And that's by just touching all the contact pins. So generally, you will have a scenario where it just doesn't turn on. In bad scenarios, you could actually short something and damage it, like you're saying. But for the most part, if you are lucky, you can just put the standoffs in, try it again, and hope that it works this time. Right. But generally, it's just a direct short. Any other tips we have in general? Another thing when in reference to the motherboard is RAM slotting. Oh, yeah, yeah. Every, every motherboard's a little bit different in the way that they, whether it's 2.4 or 1.3, um, if you're only using two sticks of RAM, you have to open up your book and take a look. Yeah. Don't forget to do that. Cause, yeah, RTFM. Because yeah. then you'll start your computer up or you'll try to and it will not start. Yeah, so this is just as easy as check the manual. Yeah, always, always check the manual because yeah. they'll have useful information about like which screws are the standoff screws um, and other kinds of features that the case might have that, that set it apart from anything you might have built yeah. before. On the motherboard side, the motherboard manuals include a lot of really important information that is, actually this is something that we weren't talking about before the shoot. The PCIe slots for multi-GPU configurations if you have a board, say that X99 classified EVGA board that's got maybe five PCIe slots, you, you can't just plug two video cards into any of those slots. It's got to be correct per the motherboard uh, prescription to make sure that they're getting the right amount of right. lanes. So check the manual for that as well if you're doing multi-GPU. You need to make sure if you're supposed to use slot one and three or one and five. It's very rarely one and two because they're too close, not the same lane count. That's something to check. And then on the motherboard manual side, again, the, the RAM slots, and you'll often find extra power headers on boards for right. overclocking. Um, and thermal paste, I don't know about you, yeah. but I'm a rice grain kind of guy. Yeah, I, yeah, rice I grain, do not yeah. use the smearing tools that come with thermal paste. <laughs> I think that's crazy. I never use credit cards. I just do your little rice grain, and I plop the CPU cooler right down on top. You of don't it. use the little plastic spoon? Nope, never have, never ah, will. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, some of those. Thermal paste tubes will come with a plastic spoon or smoother or something. It's just a gimmick. It don't don't use it. <laughs> As someone who's pulled off an, a lot of CPU coolers, it always <laughs> spreads out beautifully evenly without any assistance. So don't right. don't don't risk getting paste into your CPU <laughs> or around your yeah. onto your motherboard. You don't want to mess with yeah, that. Yeah, we have a whole video on that in the channel. Just search for the word thermal paste, and you'll yeah. find it on the channel and. You and then when you're torquing down your th oh, CPU yeah. cooler, you want to make sure don't over torque your screws anywhere on your computer. These screws do not need to be gorilla tight. I'd like to think of it as monkey tight. Um, just go till they stop and that should be plenty. You're not having tons of vibration. Right, you don't yeah. have to worry about things falling out. So Yeah, the CPU cooler especially because if you over torque the screws on that, you can actually bend the board or damage the CPU. Yeah. And that's what the recent Skylake CPU bending scandal, I guess, was about, for sure. lack of a better thing. So, yeah, that's definitely a big one. What about uh, the IO shield? The IO shield, <laughs> oh, that's, that's a pet peeve of mine. I forget that almost every system build I do because I'm so excited to get the motherboard into the case <laughs> and the CPU mounted and the graphics card in and everything plugged up that I forget to put, it should be the first thing you do. As soon as you open up your motherboard, you should take your IO shield and put it in the case because you will forget. I forget. Uh, yeah, I forget. <laughs> yeah. And at this point, actually, I don't even use them, which is probably not the best practice. But yeah, it yeah. doesn't it doesn't make a real difference no. in anything. But as somebody who's got a little bit of OCD, right. I really <laughs> like having all the parts that it came with in the computer. I I have a lot of extra parts around. <laughs> they they give you a lot of extra parts. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so that is it for our quick build tips video. As always, if you need more information on system building, free, feel free to post in the comments below or just check out our many other videos in the past. And thank you for watching. If you like this type of content, hit the Patreon link in the post video, leave a comment below, and we'll see you all next time. See ya.